It's been a while since I've done an Alexa update video, so I thought I'd share with you some of the things that came out of Amazon's developer conference. We have some good stuff coming to the smart home. I'd love to tell you about what it is, but I can't yet because that's called a tease. Another tease, make sure to stay at the end. One of my biggest sticking point with Amazon devices is gonna get worse. Amazon held their Alexa a live event for developers. This is where developers get to hear about the new tools and features they're gonna get to work with. We get to hear about features that are coming out. For this video, I put together five of the key points that I thought will affect us the most. I did sit through the hour and 37 minute keynote. I will admit there's about 20 minutes of stuff I skimmed through and I watched the rest at 1.5 times speed and it was still too long. So check it out. I'll put links to the keynote down in the description if you wanna watch it. I do recommend checking it out. Maybe you have a tough time falling asleep. Just put that on at regular speed. It should help you out. Before I talk about some of these updates coming, I think it's important that we understand what Amazon's vision is for life. That way we understand why our devices do what they do and maybe why not do what we want them to do. Now the first thing in the keynote, Senior Vice President David Limp talked about was ambient computing and intelligence. That is a big focus for Amazon. When you compare ambient intelligence to other technology paradigms, there are several things that are different. First, a lot of tech companies today want to take you out of the physical world. We're building devices and services designed to help you spend more time looking up at the world and the people in it, not down at your hands or your phone. It's technology that's there when you need it, but importantly disappears in the background when you don't. I'm editing this video right now. I actually shot it a few days ago and that ambient intelligence talk seemed like something in the future. Well today, it was announced that Amazon is buying iRobot. And The Verge has a great article titled, Amazon bought iRobot to see inside your home. With Roomba's maps, Amazon's vision of ambient intelligence in the smart home is suddenly attainable. It's not about the smart home. They wanna go way beyond that. So keep that in mind as you hear these different features, just in case you're not hearing what you wanna hear. Now, number one thing I think you should know is Amazon's tip for developers. Amazon gave developers three tips. And the way I see this is, this is what Amazon wants developers to do. Number one is think global. I think this is a great thing because support outside of the US can get a little sketchy at times. So Amazon is encouraging developers to make skills that work globally. Number two is become part of people's day. Amazon's trying to develop skills for developers to make their skills stronger and become part of people's day. That way they can increase engagement. Amazon found that people that use skills have four times more engagement and they're engaged for 40% longer. Number three is multimodal. Amazon wants developers to create skills that work on Echo Shows, on Echoes, in your car, across all different devices so that you can have Alexa all around you in different ways. I think we're gonna see some great skill improvements by adding these extra tools and encouraging engagement. Number two is a little bit scary. Amazon says that Alexa is entering the age of self. And the first stage of the age of self is self-awareness. To that I say, what the f are we doing? Has anybody seen the Terminator and what Skynet did? It didn't go so well. Sorry, that sounds crazy. You hear the word self-awareness and Alexa. What Amazon really means is that Alexa will have an ambient intelligence, meaning Alexa will know the time of day, will know requests you made in the past, will understand what information may be put in front of you at a certain point in the day on your Echo Shows. Part of this self-awareness is Alexa making decisions based on common sense reasoning. And we're seeing that in action now with Alexa hunches. Let's say Amazon's example that they use was you leave the door unlocked and then you go to bed because it's bedtime. Well, Alexa may see that you lock the door regularly at that time and offer up, would you like to have the door locked for you? With that awareness of the patterns of the house, you get these suggestions. Now, the second part of self is self-learning. An example of this is when Alexa misinterprets a word when making a request and corrects it to think what you may want it to be. They also have teachable AI. So if there's something that maybe Alexa doesn't understand in a command, it may actually ask you to teach it what you mean. That way, if you make that same request again, it knows how to handle it. The third part of self is self-service. What this means is being able to execute commands and skills without needing to hear the name of an app. For example, by saying, get me a car, 
Alexa knows to open up the Uber skill and start to order a car through there. We're also seeing more of Alexa being proactive and actually asking you if you want additional information based on requests. So pay attention to that. You'll probably notice it more that there's follow-up questions from Alexa trying to help you. Number three is pre-built developer routines. There are currently over 300 million smart devices connected to Alexa. I was reading a great article from The Verge that covers some of these different updates I'm talking about. I'll put that down below. In the article, Amazon recognizes that routines and automations are not for everybody. Aaron Rubinson, a VP on the Alexa team says, we want to make automation and proactivity available to everybody that interacts with Alexa and the devices that are connected to Alexa because it's just so delightful. I like that. It's delightful. Now developers would be able to write their own routines that could be offered up to users when they're interacting with their skill. An example of a developer routine is from Jaguar. They made one that will lock the car door, tell you your gas or electric level, and make sure the security system is on. All pre-built for you, you just need to know the command to execute it. Another example is NPR created a routine within their skill that when enabled, it will give you the, the local weather and play your local NPR or the national NPR. It's a win-win. Developers get more engagement on their skills and we get more functionality. I think people do a lot more with their smart home devices if they didn't have to learn how to write those automations. Now this next one is probably one of the biggest things for the smart home. It was Amazon talking about Matter that's coming out later this fall. We're gonna talk about that. We'll also talk a little bit about Thread. If you're not familiar with Matter, there's a great Consumer Reports article I'll put down in the description. But basically Matter creates a protocol that will connect all devices with all smart assistants to make them all work together. So basically, taking down the walls between deciding on devices and assistants to go with. Matter devices make it possible to connect to Amazon, Apple, and Google devices and be able to use all of them together to control those devices. Another cool thing is Matter devices work locally so that you don't need an internet connection and you don't need those devices talking to the manufacturer's servers. You could keep it all self-contained. And by working locally, you should see faster response times. Now the benefits of Matter is we're gonna have all devices that work together. We're gonna have a greater amount of choices since it, they'll work with all assistants. It should help with price because you don't have to make it for the different assistants. There'll be just one standard and an easier setup. Matter also includes Amazon's frustration-free setup and the frustration-free setup makes devices discoverable and easier to connect without driving the non-tech crazy. Developers can take advantage of this to make all Matter devices easy to set up. Here's a list of Amazon and other supported Matter devices. Another important thing that's coming up with the Amazon Echoes that's already out with the HomePod Mini, it is Thread support. If you're not familiar with Thread, Thread is a low powered wireless mesh network where devices can talk back and forth to each other. They can also pass information on, extending the network. Since these devices all talk to each other, if one goes offline, the network still stays up and stays strong. Now with Thread, you do need a Thread border router. With Apple, you currently have the HomePod mini and the Apple TV 4K from last year. Now here's a list of devices that can be used as a thread border router. I'm really curious to see this fall what Amazon releases for new Echoes and Thread. Number one, this is one of the things with Amazon devices that I would pay extra to stop. Uh, Amazon announced that they're going to bring out more developer tools for ads which means we're gonna see more ads. As is, I'm seeing ads pop up, then they shouldn't be because I've turned off everything on the screen, but they're still randomly coming. Amazon announced new tools for skills to serve you ads and to promote their skills. Promoted skills allow developers to create campaigns for their skills to show you ads for them on things like the Echo Show. These ads are similar to what you can do for authors and third-party sellers on Amazon.com and their mobile app. So yay, more ads. Last year, Amazon introduced Alexa of shopping options that allow app developers to offer up products to sell from within their app. Now you're gonna be able to 
buy now items within the skill or add things to your cart and never have to leave that skill. Skill developers can earn 10% off of the sales from their skills. So you take that yoga skill that offers you their favorite yoga mat to purchase. Now you can buy it right now in that skill or you can uh, buy it later by adding it to your cart all without having to leave the yoga skill and stopping your yoga practice. Amazon also created a new tool called Skill Quality Coach. This helps developers increase their engagement and increase their sales. So yay, more ads. Now, I have been noticing, like I mentioned earlier, I'm seeing more ads popping up on my Echo Show, and I'm sorry, as these tools get implemented, if the ads go up, I'm ditching this Echo Show right here. Maybe I'll just put this Echo in its place, but I'm not gonna stare at Echo Shows that constantly bring ads up. And I'm not gonna interact with skills that constantly throw ads in my face or try to sell me something. I don't know, I think we're gonna see way too many ads on Amazon devices. I think that combined with Matter is gonna shove people over to Apple or to Google. Uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts though on some of these updates? Let us know in the comments section. Next, make sure to check out this video over here. I put a good one up for you because you earned it. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.